developing it. And um, while we understand that it does take time and development, um, it does raise questions two years on that even the most uh, simple ailments, Libyans are choosing to go to neighboring Tunisia and Egypt to seek treatment. Um, and another example of that is uh, the Speaker of the Congress, uh, Hamad Mgeri, of going to Turkey for heart surgery. So it is definitely part of the society that, that needs to be developed and um, speaks to um, the lack of um, attention from, from those in Libya that, are, that aren't really focusing on the main issues that affect everyday Libyans. Um, overall, the, the lives of everyday Libyans haven't changed all that much given the revolution, although obviously we do have to recognize that Libyans have fought for their freedom and for their rights, and they now have those um, freedoms of expression and freedoms to kind of organize themselves and hopefully a freedom to participate as Libyans, as citizens in their new country and, and take part in the decision making and in the building process um, of New Libya. However, um, one of the main uh, themes that Libya seems to be struggling with right now is that of um, security. I think it's one of the single most crippling factor in uh, the development of Libya today. Uh, whether it's directly influencing an issue or not, um, it has also um, kind of developed into a crutch that uh, most government uh, uh, officials are choosing to refer to as kind of an excuse for not uh, addressing certain things, for not meeting deadlines. It's, it's kind of grown into um, a problem that as a young Libyan, I begin to question whether or not they really do wish to address the security issue um, because it just kind of gives them an excuse um, to, to fall back on and um, allows for them to, to do whatever it is that they wish to do behind the scenes. Um, that being said, um, social development is, is heavily tied to an economic stimulus um, just because of the fact that socially um, the institutions have not been developed whatsoever. And uh, economically, um, to be frank, as a young Libyan who is, is, is very on top of what's going on in my country, who's always keeping up with the latest news and, and updates, um, I can say that there are a few factors that prevent someone from from, from the citizens and um, from the general public from truly being able to comment and assess Libya's uh, development from an economic perspective. And that is the lack of transparency from the government's part and therefore we're unable to kind of track the progress of what's going on in Libya. Uh, we're unable to kind of give feedback and, and ensure that we are improving and that we are in the right direction. Um, when you think about economy, you do see figures coming out of, of the General National Congress and the, and the transitional government being quoted as, these are you know, our expenditures, this is what we used to do with, with them, but with the failure to break down the costs and, and break down um, what the actual um, checks and, and budgets are of the government and of the country, um, it's, it's really kind of a, a facade, and it, it doesn't allow for anyone to critically assess what is really going on in Libya. Um, showing us figures and, and not giving us the context uh, makes things very difficult for anyone to kind of speak out against, other than what most civil society organizations and most young people are doing is calling out for um, more transparency and calling out for kind of a, a door um, where they can kind of enter the discussion themselves and, and have a, a say on where the wealth and, and where the money is going. And I think one of the, the main underlying issues of, that Libya faces economically is um, there is a structural imbalance that was developed and maintained by the former regime. And um, that imbalance is the fact that the regime wanted to ensure that all Libyans relied on it um, and relied on it solely and, and heavily at that politically, economically, and socially, and that was how they maintained power. And in, in that effect, um, Libya being so wealthy and having um, these natural oil uh, resources, sorry, and um, having, having the oil, which our neighbors do not have, should, in, in theory, be a blessing. But um, it is a curse, it is a catch-22. 
you have the resources and the capability and the potential to develop a country into something that would be greater than any other country in its region, um, yet you do not have the incentive to develop because you have the wealth there. You don't need to uh, make institutions, you don't need to have accountability and put in the hard work to have all these systems in place because you have the wealth. And um, that is a very uh, critical decision that needs to be made by um, organizing Libya right now and then putting the constitution in place. Where do we want to take Libya economically? How do we want to structure our institutions? And it is this uh, dilemma that kind of will dictate how Libya's future is is going to unfold and um, how youth are going to be able to participate. Um, youth making up 60% of the population are um, one of the highest populations in the region that are unemployed um, while highly educated um, is, is another conundrum that uh, kind of makes most young people question what is going on inside Libya. If we have such a huge resource to tap into yet we're being completely ignored and it is again fueling all the other um, social issues that Libya faces today. So um, those are the different kind of perspectives I wanted to bring to the table. Not um, exactly positive uh, given what's, uh, what's been said, but um, I do believe that these are challenges that if faced properly um, can be dealt with and it can be kind of addressed to ensure that Libya's revolution is, is maintained and protected and, and hopefully um, does not go in vain. Thank you very much, Ayat. Um, I think you raised very many important uh, uh, points there. Um, so if you can tell us, uh, you know, we'd like to know how stable is the country right now um, and from a stability standpoint as well, you know, what are your hopes for the future? Are you on the right track? Is, is the revolution achieved um, a certain percentage of its goals? Um, um, so uh, let us know. Um, in terms of stability, um, security-wise, it, it is quite concerning because it does fluctuate. Um, there are um, very heavily armed individuals as well as groups and militias, and also there are um, people who belong to the, to the, the government army. Um, and it, it, it is funny because things do happen that are um, concerning. There are security breaches, uh, storming of the General National Congress that make everyday Libyans question the security that we have in our country. But then there are instances like we have the, um, the UK Prime Minister fly in and make a surprise visit and then a former president of France fly in and, and have a completely safe stay. And um, so it just begs the question of everyday living. If you are able to orchestrate a safe visit from foreigners that can come in and, and, and meet with you and uh, nothing happens to them, why is it that we as Libyans suffer in our everyday kind of um, existence in our country? You do have the resources and the capability to control these people who are causing these security breaches, but you aren't enforcing it. Um, so in that sense, it, it does make one wonder. And um, there are little blips here and there that do happen that kind of um, discourage everyday living and discourage kind of people from the diaspora like myself who do want to kind of go back there and, and participate and be part of the, the movement forward. Um, so in terms of stability, it is fluctuating, it is concerning, and it is kind of frustrating because we're growing impatient. Um, how much longer does this need to take place? And then you do have the resources, by all means you have the money, uh, to make it happen and to start securing the country as a whole so that we can stop using that as an excuse. Um, I think that answered your first question, hopefully. Yes, thank you very much. Um, so I'm going to ask a controversial question, a controversial question before I, I move to the audience, um, or basically playing devil's advocate. And I think this, is, um, this question is just coming from the fact I am um, Iraqi-American. Um, and I've seen um, certain things happen um, in, uh, in Iraq, and it seems like it's also being uh, the same thing is, is, uh, is playing in Egypt and, and Tunisia. Um, the question is, um, so you mentioned the health situation there, um, you know, or the economic situation, and it seems that it's, it's, it's not better. I guess my question is, was it better before, you know, um, we're, we, we as the young generation work so hard on 
revolutions and changing the country and building civil institutions like you're doing there. Um, you know, is it step one, or are we are we actually, did actually did we go backwards? Um, in terms of Libya, um, we do have to kind of think back to where things were under the regime and how far we've come, and we've certainly come forward. We've certainly reached a point where we can say we are better off without the regime. Uh, there is no denying the, the brutality that, that kind of took place under the regime and that was commonplace and the complete infringement on your basic human rights and freedoms of expression as a, as a, as a Libyan citizen, as an individual. Um, what is the problem now is that you, you have that freedom, but you don't know what to do with it and you don't know how to respect um, these freedoms. When you, when you have the rights to, you know, these rights and you, you want to give everyone the freedom of expression, say, something that's completely peaceful, you have to have other people respect that um, and respect your opinion and kind of um, live civilly. In order, in Libya, we don't see freedom of expression in a way that, that doesn't have repercussions. There are armed people, they do function independently, they are not really under control of anyone. So if you are saying something that is not necessarily agreeable to these individuals, um, you are under threat. So um, the, that, I think, needs to wait for the Constitution to be put in place, for the rule of law to be established, in order to effectively protect our rights and freedoms. Um, so we are definitely better off, and, and uh, even with the health um, and social development situation, um, even under Gaddafi, most, if not all, of my relatives, whenever there was an illness uh, that somebody suffered from,